Well, what's up guys? Welcome to the very first movie review on the Davy Crockett official channel. And today we are reviewing the movie Rebel Without a Cause, starring James Dean and Natalie Wood. So the movie opens up with James Dean character Jim Stark being arrested for being drunk and like, you know, out in the street at like 3 a.m. or something like that. Uh, I think it was like 2 a.m. They found him like out in the street all drunk, so they bring him into the police station where they introduce the next character, Judy, played by Natalie Wood. So Judy explains here that she was out there because her and her parents were going to go see a movie, and she decided to get all dressed up and put on makeup, and the dad didn't like that, so he decided to grab her and like smear up all of her makeup and mess up her makeup because he was mad about that. And so she got upset, and she ran outside, and was wandering around outside until like 3 in the morning, until the cops picked her up and brought her into the jail, or the um, police station, rather. And um, the cop here thinks that maybe she was trying to get back at her dad by wandering around. But it's like, he was like being abusive to her, so like, he's not really trying to understand how she was feeling. He's just, like, you know, taking the side of the parents and be like, oh, you need to listen to your parents. But, like, they were, the dad was literally abusing her. So we're introduced to the next character, Plato, and he's here because they found him with, like, puppies that he unalived with his mother's gun that he stole. And it's basically said here that, or at least it's implied, that... He did it because he was trying to get his mother's attention because she was off on some trip or something and his father's been gone for like years so he felt like his mother is never there to pay attention to him and he's you know he feels like he's all alone so he was doing this to act out to try to get his mother's attention so it cuts back to Jim and his family and um, the police officer is there trying to figure out what's going on here, and his parents start bickering, and, um, like, the mom's constantly, like, nagging at the dad, and the dad keeps trying to, like, figure out, uh, what Jim was doing there, and Jim has, like, a little freak out, so the cop decides to bring him into another room to talk to him more privately. So then, it's discovered here that Apparently he got into a fight with some guy and ended up unaliving him in the town before, so that's why they had to move there. So then they went to a party, and apparently he got drunk, and that's why he was out there. And he feels like his parents aren't understanding him, and he's tired of having to move around all the time because his parents think they can somehow protect him by doing that. So Jim and his family leave the police station, and they go home, and then he wakes up the next morning, and he, when he's getting breakfast with them, he sees Judy again outside, getting ready for school. So then he decides to go outside and talk to her, and kind of ask her if she's alright, because he saw her at the police station, and she kind of blows him off a little bit. So then he asks her if she wants to go to school with him, but then she tells him that... Um, she's going with the kids, which is going to be the greaser gang that he's going to be interacting with in this movie. So he goes to Dawson High, and he's not sure where to go, because this is like a new school, and he hasn't been here before. So he runs into one of the, I guess he's like a preppy, and he kind of tells him where to go, and... He gets mad at him for a second because he accidentally stepped on the school insignia. And he's like, oh, you can't do that. You don't do that here. That's a rule. And he's like, he, you know, he explains that he didn't understand it. So he kind of lets him go. So then he ends up running into the greaser gang again. And they're standing there kind of staring him down, trying to intimidate him a little bit. Because they're like, oh, this is this new kid. You know, we got to test him. So then he is able to get past them. And then he goes into the school. And then he goes down one of the hallways and Plato spots him. And 
he remembers that he saw him at the police station earlier in the day. So Jim sees on a bulletin at the school that they're having a planetarium visit. So then he goes there and he ends up being there a little bit late. And the uh, teacher is showing the constellations. But then it takes for a dark turn when he starts showing all these crazy explosions talking about like the end of the universe and the whole universe exploding. So then after that constellation show is over, they all go outside and one of the guys in the Greaser gang decides that they want to recruit Jim. So then the leader Buzz agrees with it. So then they go outside they kind of check him out a little bit, like, kind of testing him a little bit. And Plato warns him that he doesn't want to mess with these guys. These guys are trouble. And he tells him that they can go somewhere and kind of hide from them. And he shows him an old abandoned mansion that they can go to, which is kind of foreshadowing what's going to happen at the end. So anyway, so the Greaser gang goes up to... Jim's car, and for some reason they think they can get his attention by popping his tire. <laughs> I don't know why. So, he doesn't really get that mad about it. He just kind of looks a little bit annoyed. So then he has to go down and change his tire. So then they decide to do a little initiation thing. So they get out knives, and he makes him, like, fight him with the knives. So then they accept him into the Greaser gang, and they decide that they need to do a more official initiation for him to be in the gang. So they plan on doing a chicken run later in the day. So Jim goes home to clean up from what just happened with the whole knife fight thing, and... It cuts to Judy and her family, kind of shows a little more of the whole dysfunction going on in her family. So she goes home, and she's eating dinner with her parents, and she's trying to connect with her dad, and she wants to try to give her dad, like, a little kiss, like she did when she was a kid, but her dad, like, smacks her in the face. He's like, oh, you're too, you're too old to be doing stuff like that. So then she gets all upset because she feels like she's getting too old too fast, and then she ends up storming out of the house. So it cuts back to Jim, he's in bed, and his dad comes in, and Jim wants to talk to his dad about him going to see the chicken run, and, well, he doesn't, like, exactly tell him, but he is kind of like, you know, like he wants to get his dad's opinion on something he's got to do, and his dad kind of like is like you don't want to make a hasty decision you don't want to just like run in and do something and jim gets mad because he just wants like a direct answer and the dad's like you know you're young you can't just like go in bullheaded doing things and it's kind of like you know in 10 years you'll forget all this happened so then jim gets mad because he doesn't want to wait like 10 years he needs an answer now so his dad tries to, you know, he wants to turn on the light so he can actually talk, and he sees that he has blood all over him. So then Jim gets dressed and runs outside, and he decides to run away so he can go to the chicken run. So Jim leaves his house, he goes to the chicken run, where they have it, like, on this giant, like, cliff, where, like, the ocean is, and... He meets up with Plato and Judy, and they show Judy and Plato kind of talking about him a little bit, and they say how they just met him, like, that day, so they're, like, now just becoming friends with him, and Plato's talking about how he wants to, you know, hang out with him more, because he feels like he's, like, a big brother he never had, and... Judy and Plato talking more about him, and it's revealed that apparently he likes to be called Jamie, so then she gets a little, she's like, whoa, Jamie? <laughs> That's a little, like, surprising, because he's, like, this tough guy. But, like, you know, he lets his friends call him Jamie. So then he meets up with Buzz, and they go and 
look at the cliff where they're going to be jumping off of, and it's like really high. And Buzz is saying how you know he likes him and like he you know wants him to be in the Greaser gang. So then they go back to the cars and they get in, and he sees Judy talking to Buzz, and he's kind of like, oh, I don't have a chance of her. Like you know she's dating Buzz here. So Jim and Buzz get into the cars, and they're racing, and everyone's all, like, you know, freaking out, like, cheering them on and stuff, and they're, like, doing the chicken run, and when they're about to try to jump out of the cars, Jim is able to jump out safely, but unfortunately, Buzz gets his coat stuck on the handle of the car door, and he ends up going down in his car over the cliff and into the water. So then everyone's like all freaking out and they all run over to the cliff to see if he's all right. But unfortunately he's not because he's gone now. So then Jim runs up and he's like all laughing. He's like, ha ha, you know, he's like, what's going on here? And then the one creature guy gets all upset and he's like, Oh, Buzz, Buzz is down there. It's like, oh, he got killed. And for some reason, like, they're kind of acting like it was somehow Jim's fault. But, like, it wasn't his fault. Buzz, like, got his coat stuck to the door handle. So, like, he wasn't able to jump out in time. So after all of that, Jim takes Judy and Plato home. And as Jim drops Judy off, he stops her and he gives back her the little makeup kit that he found at the police station earlier in the movie. So then he goes and takes Plato home and Plato asks him if he wants to hang out because he doesn't want to be alone right now. But Jim kind of blows him off and says that he actually wants to be alone. So then Jim just goes back into the house and tries to go to sleep. So Jim goes home after all this because he needs to vent to someone. So he decides that he needs to vent to his parents. So he goes into his house, he sits down on the couch and is drinking a glass of milk, and then his dad wakes up, and he's all worried, it's like, he's like, you know, where were you? There was an accident on the TV. So then Jim goes over to the stairs, and he says that he needs to talk to his parents, and he says that he was in the accident, and they get all upset, and they're like, oh, did anyone see you? And he's kind of like being idealistic about it, and he's like, and he's like, oh, I, I never do any, I can never do anything right. And he wants to go to the cops about it. And the mom doesn't want him to do that. And she's like all scared. She tells him, oh, just forget about it. And then he's all upset because he can't just like forget about what just happened. And the dad is, you know, talking to him. And he's like, you can't be like idealistic like this all the time. So then Jim gets mad at the dad and he tries to beat the dad up possibly trying to unalive him and then he gets mad and just like runs out of the house and goes off to find Judy. But before he does that he decides to go to a police station to see if he can talk to the police officer who was at the beginning of the movie, Ray Flemings. But unfortunately he's not there so then he tries to call Judy at her house. So Jim tries calling Judy but her parents pick up instead and they don't know who he is, so they just hang up on him. So then she, Judy gets mad, and she runs out of the house. And then a couple minutes later, she meets up with Jim, like, outside, like, on, on the alley. I think it's, like, an alley. And they're talking about how their parents don't understand them. And then they're interrupted when, on the radio, the announcer says that the Greaser gang requests a song for Buzz and they're basically saying how they're looking for Jim. And then Jim says that, you know, he it wasn't his fault that Buzz died. Like, he jumped at the right spot. He didn't chicken. And, you know, it was all an accident. So they decide that they need to get out of there and find somewhere where they can hide. So then Jim tells Judy about a place where they can go hide which, you know, is the mansion that they were talking about earlier in the movie. And then she's asking him, like, how long he's known Plato. And he's like, oh, I, I met him this morning. So then they decide that they need to go and hide. So they go to the mansion that he was talking about earlier in the movie. But before that happens, it cuts to Plato 
and he's like driving his little moped home where some of the guys from the greaser gang are sitting there waiting for him. So then they try to jump him, but he runs into his house and they grab him and they steal his address book and they see that Jim's address is in that. So they use that to try to look for him. So then Plato runs into the house, into his room, and his maid is all freaking out and everything. So he grabs a gun and he goes to run outside and he's like, oh, I need, I need to warn Jim that these guys are looking for him. So then he runs out and he runs back to uh, Jim's house looking for Jim. And before he gets there, the greaser gang is there and th they knock on Jim's front door and they leave a little like chicken there to prank the parents. And the parents come out and the greasers are like, you know, where is he? And they don't know where he is. So then they leave and then Plato comes to Jim's house and runs into the dad, and Plato said that he's looking for Jim, and the dad says they have no idea where he is. So then Plato kind of thinks for a second, and then he realizes that Jim's probably up at that old abandoned mansion. So then he decides he needs to go to the mansion so he can warn Jim. So then Plato meets up with Jim and Judy at the mansion, and they're kind of messing around a little bit, pretending that they, you know, that they live in the mansion. And then they end up going down to the pool area, and they're like hanging out there a little bit. And then Plato starts talking about his dad. And he says about how oh, his, he's like, oh yeah, my dad was a sea captain in the Naval Army. And then Jim said that he said something before about how like he like lived in New York or something. So Plato finally has to admit that he really doesn't know where his dad is because he ran out on him when he was like a baby. And he, you know, he tried to remember, like, everything that happened, but, like, he couldn't. So, like, his mother took him to a shrink so she could figure out his trauma and everything. So, like, you know, they made him remember, like, when he was a baby. So then Judy and Jim decide to go off and go into the house. And Plato decides just to stay outside because he, like, falls asleep. And Judy and Jim go into the house and they find a little spot where there's, like, a fire. And they get down to try to go to sleep. And Judy starts talking about how she's never been in, like, an actual serious relationship with anyone. And she's never felt like she's actually loved someone until she met Jim. And now she finally feels like she can love someone and someone actually loves her back. So after that, when Plato is sleeping outside, some of the guys from the greaser gang come up to him. And they're like, oh, where, where's your friend? So then he freaks out and he runs down to the pool to try to get away from them. And they, you know, they kind of have like a little bit of a fight there in the pool. He throws like a chain at the guy. And they end up chasing him into the house where Plato grabs his gun. And he is trying to hide from the guys underneath a uh, piano. But then one of the guys comes into the house and then Plato freaks out. And then he goes over and he starts shooting at the one guy. So Jim and Judy hear the gunshots, so then they come out to see what's going on, and Jim runs into Plato, and Plato, like, is freaking out. He's like, oh, you're not my father. And he runs outside, and Jim runs after him, and they end up running into the woods, and there's a little bit of a shootout with the police. And Judy catches up to Jim, and she's like, oh, what's going on? And, you know, he's trying to catch up to Plato, and... He finally is like, he realizes that Plato wanted to make them his family. And, you know, um, Judy is saying to Jim, she's like, oh, you should have heard what he said before. Like, you know, basically, uh, I guess back when they were at the chicken run, Plato was like basically saying that Jim was like his father and like he was the hero, like in the China Sea. The cops show up and they're chasing Plato and he ends up going over to the observatory and Jim and Judy they see him going there so they run up so they can try to help him so they're all standing there and they're freaking out trying to figure out like what he's doing and trying to calm him down so then Jim's parents are in a cop car with Ray and he gets a call that there's you know this thing this whole thing going down at the observatory so he's like oh we got to go here now 
So then, you know, they show up and everyone's there at the observatory, like the cops and everyone, and Jim's parents are there. And, you know, Plato runs into the observatory and they're all trying to get him to come out. And they see Jim and Judy, they run in after Plato. And, you know, they go in after him and he's hiding inside the observatory. And Jim tries to go up to him and try to reason with him. And he's sitting there, you know, Plato's afraid to go out there because he shot at one of the cops. And Jim was like, oh, you know, they're all right. They just want to talk to you. And, you know, Jim is trying to get him to go outside. So then Plato's like, oh, it's cold. So then Jim gives Plato his jacket. So then they slowly walk out. And then Jim sees that Plato still has the gun. So Jim is like, oh, can I take a look at the gun? Like, you've been, you know, you've been walking around all day with this gun. Like, you know. And, you know, Plato re reluctantly gives it to him. So then Jim takes the bullet casing out of, or the, um, the bullet, I forget what it's called. He takes the bullet, the bullets out of the gun, and then he gives it back to Plato. And then Jim goes outside, and he tries to tell the cops that he has the bullets, so, you know, Plato can't hurt anyone. The one other cop's like, oh, that kid, the other kid still has a gun. And, you know, they, I guess they can't hear Jim. So then Plato freaks out. And he runs out of the observatory, and one of the cops gets freaked out by it and ends up shooting Plato. So then Plato's like lying down there, and everyone runs up to Plato, and Jim's dad runs up, and he's like, Oh, for a moment there, I thought that was Jim in that jacket. And then, you know, as Plato breathes his last breath, Jim's like sitting there crying, and he's like upset. And then, you know, they carry him off, and. Jim takes his jacket back and then he goes up to his parents and he's like introduces Judy to them. He's like, oh, this is my girlfriend Judy. I guess, you know, or he doesn't say girlfriend, but he says friend, but she might as well be his girlfriend now. Um, he introduces Judy to his parents and, you know, he's all upset about what's going on. So then his dad tells him that he's, you know, he'll try to be strong as much, you know, he'll be as strong as Jim wants him to be. So then, you know, they all leave. You know, as they leave, like, the whole scene is set here, which shows the whole entire observatory, and then, like, there's, like, a little detective guy that comes in. But, yeah, that's Rebel Without a Cause. I definitely give this, like, a five-star rating. Some of the acting is a little dated and a little cheesy, but this was a really good, like, action 50s movie. I think back then they were trying to make it look like it was this real violent movie, even though it's not really that violent. And, yeah, James Dean was definitely good at this. This is probably one of his best films. And, you know, definitely give this a five-star rating. And that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. If you like this, comment. Comment what other movies you'd like me to review. 